Hello, my name is Deanna Francois, and this is my research project, Dance and Movement Enacting Social Change. Becoming is about testing and dismantling the existing limits without entirely erasing the body. The body cannot be erased, as it is not only a dancing element, but also a political tool. There are many tactics a person could implement in order to challenge the extensive oppressive systems that have existed for centuries in the United States. And I attest that movement and dance are fundamental components of enacting social change. This concept of dance and movement having an integral position in creating social change is best seen in the underground ballroom scene. The ballroom scene is an underground subculture that arose in the 1970s, comprised of majority Black and Latino LGBTQ plus individuals in New York. It consists of performance competitions called categories that embrace a variety of components of gender and self-identity expression. The ballroom scene is a space that challenges social norms, most obviously in ideas of the gender binary, but also in facets of race, class, sexuality, body positivity, and gender roles. The roots of the underground ballroom scene can be traced as far back as the late 1800s with the extravagant drag queen pageants held at the Hamilton Lodge Ball in Harlem, New York. This infamous pageant was called the Masquerade and Civic Ball, and it was a beauty pageant for both male and female impersonators. The Masquerade and Civic Ball lasted well into the 20th century and attracted a great quantity of spectators and participants in the 1920s and 30s. This annual event brought together a number of societies outcasts like LGBTQ plus individuals, sex workers, and intersex people to compete in beauty pageants while finding community and having good times. Because of the gender bending and racial integration, this pageant was met with both support and disdain from society. Some of that disdain came from within the walls of the ballroom. Black and Latino queens felt they were being unfairly judged by the majority white judging panels during pageants. They would usually never take home the grand prize like their white counterparts, which revealed the judges' biases towards traditional white beauty standards. As a result, queens of color created their own pageants and balls, and it was this shift where we see the insurgence of houses in the 1970s. Houses are familial structures that became safe spaces for primarily LGBTQ plus people that came from broken homes or were shunned from their community for their gender or sexual identities. Houses usually have a niche, characteristic, or shared interest that brings all of the members together. Like the original members of the House of Christian were all students at Catholic schools in New York. And the original members of the House of Extravaganza were all of Latino descent. These houses, usually named after high fashion icons or brands, consisted of a non-biological mother, father, or both who provided familial connection, emotional support, shelter, and even financial support to their children. They also are the teams that compete against each other in various categories at a ball. In the early 1980s, the house and ballroom scene became more closely affiliated with the art and fashion scene of New York. Big name designers even went as far as creating their own houses. Fashion is an immense component of ballroom as the names of various houses and the inspiration for a number of stylistic elements of movement during a ball competition. For example, in a ball put on by the House of Prestige in 1997, there was a category called European Runway Destruction with the description, the ultimate catwalk diva punishing the runway coming from a foreign country. This category was inspired by the exceedingly popular supermodels of the time that would demand attention and annihilate the runway during fashion shows. One of the biggest and most influential aspects of ballroom inspired by fashion is voguing. Voguing got its name from one of the most prestigious high fashion magazines in the world, Vogue. It is an improvisational style of movement that uses inspiration from the model poses on the cover and within the pages of high fashion magazines like Vogue to create unique shapes and add flair to a ball category. In its inception, voguing was not something that was officially taught. It is a movement style that was learned through observation, creativity, and participation. Despite the fact that it was never originally formally taught, there are still elements that need to be included in a voguing performance to consider it so. There are three forms of Vogue, Old Way, New Way, and Vogue Femme. 
I will focus solely on Vogue Femme. There are many elements of Vogue Femme, and knowing and understanding them is important in the discussion of how dance and movement is used to implement social change. The major elements include arm control performance, hand performance, leg control performance, catwalking, duck walking, floor performance, spins, and dips. Arm control performance emphasizes the movement and control of the arms as they move away, towards, and around the torso, creating shapes and gestures like pointing and framing. Control in this context describes the coordination of the arm movement with the other parts of the body, like the legs, hands, and head. Hand performance is the movement of the hands. Vogue Femme uses more of a limp wrist instead of the sharp, angular wrists you would see in old or new way bogey. Leg control performance is the non-locomotor movements of the legs like bent knees and steps. Control refers to the coordination of the legs with other parts of the body. Catwalking is a walk with bent knees and with each wide step the hip follows. So as you step on the right foot, your right hip raises and vice versa. Duck walking is similar to catwalk but it is done in a very low squat where the body is close together and the steps are smaller. Floor performance refers to any variation of movement that is performed on the floor. Spins are just that, spins on two feet or one foot. They can be done on the floor or standing. Dip is a movement that lowers you to the floor. A dip is a distinctly prominent motif in Vogue Femme. It is similar to a jazz split but with the back on the floor and sometimes the straight leg will be in the air pointing towards the ceiling. This step is used as somewhat of an exclamation point or emphasis at the end or the middle of a movement phrase. All of these elements need to be present during a Vogue Femme performance in order for the movement to be considered voguing by the judges. The importance of knowing and understanding these Vogue Femme elements arises when we discuss who is performing these movements. In the ballroom, there are four main genders. Butch queens, who are cisgender men with a variety of effeminate or masculine appearances and behaviors, usually gay. Femme queens, male to female transgendered people, Butches, female to male transgendered people or masculine presenting women, and women, cisgender women. These gender groupings decide who will compete against who in specific categories during a ball. My previous example of the European runway destruction category at the House of Prestige Ball was a category for femme queens. That means only transgender women were allowed to compete in that category. These genders are an integral part of the ballroom scene as the fight back against the traditional man-woman gender binary in society. Having these four categories made participants feel more comfortable embracing and expressing their gender identities in a welcoming, understanding space. Today in the ballroom world, there's even more of a pushback against these four genders, and space is opening up for people that identify as more than one gender, gender fluid, and people that do not want to identify as any specific gender at all non-binary. Vogue Femme is usually a category performed by butch queens, and Christina Tente says it best in her article. Vogue Femme embraces and celebrates characteristics which are stereotypically considered shameful, like sensuality, softness, and audacity. Vogue Femme explores limp wrists, twirling, and many other feminine movements that are not usually expected to be seen on men. This is a prime example of how movement tests the boundaries of traditional gender norms, all while rewriting the idea of what it looks like for a man to move and express himself. Vogue Femme is one of the aspects of ballroom that is most well known today, but it is important to know what came before it and how its predecessors helped facilitate an inclusive, diverse environment. Besides voguing, there are a few other traditional components of ballroom categories. Runway, body, and face. Runway is a category where a participant shows off their best runway walk. The idea is to emulate supermodels like Tyra Banks and Naomi Campbell, but with more freedom to improvise and add personal flair. 
The walk is usually fast paced with pivot turns being the biggest action and an unbothered cool facial expression. Body is a form of runway that emphasizes the body and its shape. The idea is to sell your body as the best and most beautiful, whatever it may look like. You could be petite and skinny, big and tall, muscular or overweight, and all it takes to win is that you show off your confidence in what you have the best way you know how. The ballroom community generally accepts multiple body types through specific categories like big boys and girls or realness categories that celebrate beauty in the variety of different looks and aesthetics that it manifests. Face is a form of body that emphasizes the face. People that walk this category are selling their face by doing things like batting their eyelashes or framing their good side with their hands in order to be seen as the prettiest in the room. These categories are the precursors to Vogue Femme and aspects of these elements are performed alongside all of the necessary Vogue Femme elements. Runway, body, and face are important in the conversation of creating changes in inclusion and diversity because they embrace and accept a variety of different human qualities from all walks of life, like race, conventional attractiveness, and body type. Vogue began as an underground subculture and continues that legacy today. However, it has grown and amassed a lot of attention in the mainstream media. The most notable moment of Vogue leaving the underground was in the year 1990 when superstar Madonna released her hit song Vogue. This song was based on ballroom culture and featured old way Vogue performance in the music video. This song introduced a wide range of people to Vogue dance and it was around this time that pop culture was becoming a large part of the ballroom scene. Madonna brought eyes to this underground subculture and even provided opportunities for iconic ballroom participants like Jose Gutierrez and Luis Camacho of House of Extravaganza. Vogue becoming more mainstream and visible to the public eye became a debatable topic for performers and queer studies professionals. Since Vogue has grown more attention, it has evolved in a variety of ways that are contrary to how it started. For example, voguing is now being taught in workshops and studio classes around the globe. Originally, voguing was something you had to learn just from watching or participating. It is deviated from that now, and anyone can learn from a class, which is usually for a profit. There's also a conversation about whether Madonna's song was genuinely supportive of the ballroom community. For some, Madonna appears to be a white woman profiting off of the ideas of people of color and portraying Vogue to be more about performance rather than self-expression. Madonna set the precedent for other artists like Rihanna, Kylie Minogue, and Jennifer Lopez to use this subculture in various performances and songs. A quote from Constantine Chatsapapa Theodoridis' article says, Most of the uninterest directed by mainstream media as subcultures is voyeuristic and predatory. This quote is used to explain that mainstream media has a habit of making subcultures codified and comprehensible, which then forces assimilation and conformism. Balls arose as a space for marginalized groups to feel comfortable expressing their identities in a world that forces them to hide who they are. Is this purpose lost when it is placed in front of a much wider audience and used as a means of entertainment? Another quote from the same author's article states, in this light, Vogue's shared queer politics fails to radically challenge normative structures due to the fact that its critical potential has been reduced to a spectacle. I would argue that in a society built off of white supremacy, patriarchy, and heteronormativity, spectacle is radical change. The act of historically oppressed communities unapologetically embracing themselves and their culture in front of an incredibly large audience is a great step in enacting social change. It is important for these communities to be a part of these spectacular projects and educate the world on their true history for generations to come. All in all, the ballroom scene is a glorious example of how movement and dance is fundamental in challenging social norms. The ballroom space celebrates all people regardless of race, gender identity, or even body type. In the ballroom, women and femininity are celebrated alongside masculinity. That is an example of social activism in a patriarchal society that forces femininity and masculinity into rigid boxes and guidelines. The individuals a part of the ballroom scene 
are using their bodies as statements to fight against the oppressive systems that keep them from embracing who they are. And that is the first step into creating change. These are the sources that I use to help aid me in my research. Thank you.